China is still the number one seller of EVs. And of course, one of the biggest companies to cover and watch in China is Xping. If anyone can go head to head with the bad boy in China right now, which is the Tesla Model 3, it's gonna be this company, Xping. My name is Paul Barron, this is TechPath. We're gonna dive into Xping's most recent release. This is a drop. I mean, literally a huge drop for Xping. The P5 Smart Sedan is the car. It's the first world's first mass-produced smart EV equipped with automotive-grade LiDAR technology. Now, we just had the CEO of Invisix on our show, and he kind of educated us on how LiDAR is really a augmented advantage in being able to go to full autonomy. What I mean by that is you either have real vision or all cameras, much like what Tesla uses, and then you have LiDAR being used a lot in support of, to support either as a secondary system or as an expansive system to only add value to what the car can see for potentially full self-driving. So if the fact that Xping is moving in this direction and going down this direction uh, is huge. Uh, Xping's full stack in-house development autonomous driving system, which is Xpilot, will now be taking advantage of both LiDAR and the camera systems, which I think is gonna be a huge advantage. It's something that I think over time, and I know that Elon, I know you're, I know you're watching, uh, I know that Elon has looked at this in the past and mainly for price point reasons uh, has re reserved from putting LiDAR in, but LiDAR is crashing through the floor in terms of cost. It will soon be a commodity. And when it gets to that point, it's gonna be like buying an HD camera or maybe not quite at that price, but it's gonna be very competitive in terms of pricing and it definitely won't be a, a hurting a car's profitability by putting LiDAR into a vehicle. And I think it's only gonna help us in terms of full autonomy as we see more and more software changes and hardware changes coming out in the future. So this is gonna be a big thing I think for Xping in the race to fully autonomous driving uh, and what they're doing in terms of their full stack in-house development. So that'll be fun. Xping, or excuse me, Xpilot 3.5 will have a fully updated version of the feature called Navigation Guided Pilot or NGP, which allows users full autonomy to do tasks such as changing lanes or overtaking a car. Again, these are big features that you need for full self-driving. And the fact that this is gonna be coming out in a vehicle from Xping is definitely going head to head with the number one uh, autopilot and full self-driving company out there being Tesla. So uh, I like this, the fact that they are really stretching the limit on uh, the technology itself, especially in the most important part of the car, being a full self-driving and autonomy. That is uh, brilliant and of course being in a market where EVs are basically being soaked up so fast, Xping's gonna get uh, going here pretty well. Here's the thing that is a little concerning and a little weird really, is when they dropped this car today, Xping's market share and stock price basically took a dive. Now, I don't know if that was analysts looking at the product and saying, wait a minute, it wasn't far advanced enough. Wait a minute, it looks like a Toyota Camry. I don't know what direction it is, but we saw a massive sell-off in Xping as this car dropped onto the market. So this will be interesting to see how this holds up and if Xping's stock price uh, repositions with uh, maybe some more news coming out of, around these drops. So uh, this is interesting. Uh, it will be releasing its pricing at the Shanghai Auto Show on April 19th. Uh, the P5 will be priced lower than the P7, which starts at around 229,000 yuan, which is about 35 grand uh, after its subsidies. In comparison, the Tesla Model 3 in China goes at 250,000 yuan. Uh, so you can kind of see it's around 38,000 uh, US. So that I think is very, very head on with the Model 3. So Xping definitely going after the Model 3 here with full autonomy potentially and full self-driving as one of its key factors and then a price point that's gonna be very competitive. Being the fact that it is a, and, and Xping is still looked at in the Chinese market as a very cool brand. Uh, I don't know that they can overtake Tesla's branding in this particular factor in the Chinese market because American brands do so well there. But uh, the fact that they are bringing all these new you know, features and benefits to this particular car, which is amazing. Now let's walk through the interior of this vehicle. First thing I noticed, obviously another massive screen. They've got a lot of these unusual features showing up in the car, including this one that I wasn't sure what it was. And that was this like 
pink glowing thing, didn't really identify what it was. I don't know if that's a hand desanitizer or if that's something to do with the LiDAR, but it's definitely something that you have not seen in a car before. So who knows what the Chinese are up to on this one. Uh, it'll be fun to see how the interior kind of falls out. Apps were like flying off the screen. This was one of the most interesting interiors I've seen yet, and I liked it. I liked the interior. It does feel a lot like Toyota, which is not a bad thing, not a bad thing at all. Toyota is a great product and a great brand, uh, but I do feel that it may come in a little bit under in terms of my styling preference. That's just for me personally. For those of you out there who are, say, a Toyota Camry buyer or driver, this might be the car for you. This could be one of those that really goes after the ICE side of the business, which really at the end of the day, when you think about the EVs, they're not trying to pony up against Tesla. They're really trying to pony up against their number one ICE competitor in that particular category, which would probably be the Corolla, the Camry, one of those kinds of vehicles in the ICE category on Toyota or even Honda with the Civic and of course the Honda Accord. These are the cars that these companies are trying to compete against and be able to do it. And I think with these kind of features, uh, this is gonna be a good one. Officials said that the company will expand its footprint in Northern Europe and the P5 would eventually be launched there. Now, if you've been watching Xping, they are actually making a play in Europe. Now remember, Europe is still a massive uh, market in terms of adoption. Norway still being one of the highest adoption rates of all you know, across the, uh, the globe in terms of EVs. Uh, and I saw a couple of videos of where Xfing was dropping cars into Norway and across Europe. And I think this is a market that they are really going after in uh, basically in advance of, uh, or excuse me, Tesla dropping and opening uh, Giga Berlin, which means there's gonna be a ton of opportunity with uh, inventory of Tesla Model 3s there. So I think this is a strategic move by Xping to really go into the European markets. And they already have a good market share there and an opportunity to really sell some cars into that market because of the availability and demand on electric vehicles. Could they do that in the US? Much more difficult, definitely a lot more uh, complicated. Last year, Xping delivered 27,000 vehicles, more than doubling from 2019 in comparison. Uh, Tesla's Model 3 alone sold more than 137 uh, units uh, in 2020 in China, so 137,000 units in uh, 2020 in China. So as you can see, Tesla is kind of controlling the market share over there right now in terms of EV sales, but I feel like Xping is really going head to head with the ICE manufacturers with this one. Overall on a rating, on my rating on these EVs, now that we've covered so many drops, I would kind of put this car up there with one of the top, maybe the top three or four recent drops that we've had. Um, I still like the Hyundais. Um, they are just super sexy. I, I love where they're going with their drops. Audi, I feel like, is maybe a little bit slow on the interior. Uh, Xping, though, is a young company, definitely one to keep an eye on in terms of the ability to, to make a dent on uh, really kind of replacing the ICE fleet across the world. And that's gonna take some time. I heard a, a statement on this uh, on the Ride, the Ride the Lightning podcast that ICE vehicle, full fleet, you know, we're talking maybe 50 years, which kind of surprised me a little bit because I felt like maybe by, you know, 2040, I guess, that's 20 years from now, uh, 2050 maybe, uh, we could get to a point where a full uh, ICE fleet could be replaced by all uh, EVs. We'll see how that goes, but with things like this happening from companies like Xping, we're on the right direction, everybody's on the right track, uh, right path, and of course, as you guys are listening in over on the podcast, make sure and subscribe to us. That's the best way to learn more and more of this kind of late-breaking news on what's happening in the EV space, autonomy, AI, and of course, our coverage on technology mainstream. That's really what TechPath is about. If you have a show idea and you wanna send us a note, or maybe you have something you'd love for us to cover, you can send it to producer at reverendnetworks.com and you can hit me up on Twitter at Paul Barron or over on at TechPath TV, which will be uh, talking to me as well because I kind of manage that uh, Twitter account. Listen, love to see you guys back. Cover more. Remember, subscribe right here on YouTube and make sure and share the video. And don't forget, when you are out there and you're looking at buying a new car, just go right to the EV market and forget about the ICE vehicles. That's the next step for you. We'll catch you next time right here on TechPath.